community here in Rochester. And what I want to do today is just kind of do a reenactment of what an accident scene would look like. So the whole scenario is this is a prom night. Happy time to you young people. Okay, but unfortunately someone uh, abused uh, a substance, we'll call it alcohol. Okay, and there's a, a fatal accident. So I'm going to show you in real time what it looks like for us to get to a scene and to get you out. It just doesn't happen. And I want you to think, so no one here is old enough. Anyone 21 is senior? I mean, it wasn't my senior year, but. Okay, so no one here is actually old enough to drink. Okay, so some statistics. Um, I know you've already talked to, uh, to Robert Tossin and his story is pretty dramatic. I knew him as a young man, as a high school student. Uh, very favorable military career. And unfortunately, because of a bad decision, things change in his life. Okay, this is to get you to think about prom and, and graduation season and not to make the same bad decision and, and ruin your life. Okay, so uh, one third of all accidents are alcohol related in the United States. About 32 people a day, they say. My stats for the state of Indiana for 2023 first quarter, DUI deaths, 227 in the state of Indiana. How many of you think of those were teenagers? Probably half. 28. Not, not quite half, but, but still 28 of your peers in this state are not going to prom and are not graduating because they've already deceased in, in the first three months of, of this year. Something to think about. Um, let's see. Uh, 2015, because I go back before COVID because that kind of changed the stats. So, 2,333 teenagers between 19 and 16 and 19 died in crashes uh, that were alcohol related. Over 200,000 were treated in the emergency room for injuries, alcohol related, uh, underage drinking. So drivers 15 to 19, you guys make up 7% of the population on a trip and fall. You, you account for 11% of all the motor vehicle accidents. So you're inexperienced, uh, don't have a lot of time driving, and then if you compromise that with alcohol, your risk factors go up exponentially, okay? So I, I'm here to get you guys to think about this. Uh, let's see. So if you're driving 16 to 20 and you're drinking, you are 17 times more likely to die in a motor vehicle accident. Okay, and if you're the smart one that's not drinking, and you get in the person in the car with a person who is drinking, you could be the next fatality as well. You don't have to be drinking; you just have to be with the person who chose to make the wrong decision. Okay. So what we're gonna do here? We're gonna start now. Like I said, sometimes it takes a while for, for dispatch to get the 911 call. So right now I've activated 911. You hear the dispatch over my radio. You'll have the EMS, fire, and police come and arrive as, as real time as we can get. And once they hit the ground, you'll, you'll see what it takes for us to get the patients treated and call for a helicopter and, and do all these life-saving things. The code to 1055 was one intoxicated driver, so they already got that call. So uh, here shortly, so the call. So and depending on where you're going to prom, if you're out in the country, not, all, not every city has a paid department. So you got to wait for the volunteers to leave his living room, go to the fire station, get his gear, get in his truck, and then respond. Okay. What is wrong with you? 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 What is wrong with you?
Calm oh down. Calm down. Are you, where are you, Verdun? On your left? We have a call for all the emergency responders to, to arrive. We don't all arrive at once. Right now, I've got two officers trying to assess the oh case. Don't call in and, and let us know what patients right. we have. What happened, buddy? And, and what other additional oh uh, equipment's going to be needed. <laughs> Went right out of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can smell a little bit of alcohol. Yeah. I'm to drink today. Uh, okay. 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 Wake up! Hang tight for me real quick. We get an EMS here, okay? Please wake up! Wake up! Come on, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Saving uh, interventions that need to be Are you done on scene. Really? <laughs> and we determine who needs to be evacuated. Arm a little bit. Okay, we're going to get somebody here. Is that your blood or something? Hey, Jake, I got one here. You got one here. Looks like yours. Don't want to get out of the door. Okay, at this time it's been determined that the patient that's been partially ejected is deceased at this time. So there's one of your student body that is not going to be an interest. Uh, yeah, don't get away. Yeah, I'm right here, stay. I'm right here. You're going to be okay. All right. <laughs> Hey, Deputy Utter now is doing field sobriety tests on the driver. So any scholarship, the chance to get to go to school, getting a good job, all those are no more. Okay, Shay. Determine if someone needs to be airlifted out of the scene. So depending on where you're at, sometimes we can do it uh, a scene flight or they'll, they'll land on scene. So they're going to go to a bigger trauma one hospital. Now this is the nine step test. What you're going to do is you're going to do the nine step up and down the side and turn back and you're going to treat your own way. Are you going to get shit? Down to your feet, counting out loud. Feel the toe. One, two. You see the dog of life, aren't you? Okay, at this time we should observe Deputy Otter still conducting the field survival test. We have a parent on scene, so Juan Corpin needs to explain to him what happened to his child. Yeah, 
apparent this is what you want to come across. It's the same that the kid was involved in. There's a flight nurse and a paramedic on board. They'll come and get the reported to patient. The patient is loaded into the helicopter and flown to the number one hospital. On you. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Straps. Okay, you notice the flight through the parking the helicopter. The legal limit is in the state of Indiana. Point zero eight. Okay, we're not talking about that. Okay, my machine says I do a one point two. All right. So you are over the legal limit. All right. Okay, we're going to read you something real quick. Okay. 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 Problem cause when you operate a motor vehicle on Cox Canyon on the snow, I'll do the operation. I'll do the operation. The refusal to submit to a criminal test will result in suspension of your driving privileges for one year. If you have a previous view on conviction, your license will be suspended for two years. Do you understand that? Okay, will you not take a criminal test? Okay, all right, go ahead and bring it up. that the driver is going to get the bright test and then get the same test and then get the same test.
Their next stop is going to be the board. I've got a helicopter going to a trauma center. I have another ground ambulance taking that person into another trauma center. I hope you guys realize this was pretend. That this is as close to real as I can get to make you guys think about what can happen on trauma and graduation. So AAA has this little thing I found for, for a promise thing that, that you guys can make to yourself and to your friends. So. I promise not to drink and drive or uh, drive impaired or distracted. The biggest thing is to watch out for your friends. Uh, I was in the Army, so a battle buddy was important to me, someone who, who always watched my back um, when I was in Baghdad. So you can do that for your friends by making sure your friends don't drive impaired or distracted. The biggest thing is you can make a promise to your parents that none of them want to go to your work identify your remains that night so you can make a okay to promise to your parents that you will not drive your parents or distract it and if you do and I, I told this to my kids who both graduated from Rochester if there was a, a bad decision made for them to call me and there'd be no consequences and we would discuss it later on but have the courage if you're going to, if you, you think you're old enough to yeah, yeah, you're consume good. alcohol or any other illicit substance that, that makes you impaired. Because you have the courage to call your parents and ask for help so you don't end up in part of the scene that you just witnessed here. So I encourage you guys to, to enjoy your prom, enjoy your graduation, enjoy the rest of your lives. But just think. That's all I can ask you to do is think. So thank you. The Governor Garrison is going to give me a quick report, tell me what, what's going on here. Uh, Governor Garrison, I'm at 1050. Two cars, one DOA, one to patients in Florida, ultimate status. It does have rice, this rice had lungs reflated. He's been signed for long, unresponsive. Uh, breathing's been shallow, rapid, vitals are 60 over 40. Lost a lot of blood, have no idea. Okay, what's his uh, monitor been showing? Science stack. Sinus cat, meaning he just has a fast heart rate. Can somebody do a quick assessment on the lungs and tell me what you got? I don't have any breast lung on this right side. Okay, we're going to set up for a chest tube. Jake, can you innovate this patient for me? I want a second IV started. Let's get two units of blood ready. Uh, this patient's not doing well. Need a blood pressure as well. Chest tube. Okay, I'll get that put in. Jake, you got the tube inserted? Tube in place. Tube in place. Okay. Lori's sitting up for a chest tube. Up. The physician will have to put that in, obviously. I can't get another line. You can't get an IV. Okay, let's go to an IO. Anybody know what an IO is? That's where we do an IV, but we drill it into your bone. Ooh, so that's what she's going to do next. In the meantime, I'm going to be inserting this chest tube. Hopefully it's going to make his breathing a little easier. 
Okay, chest tubes in place. Jake, can you check the breast sounds for me? See what we got? Okay, we got that IO going yet, guys? Let's go. We gotta hurry. Let's put the patients going down the tubes. Right side still diminished. Okay. Do what? Well, we got a chest tube in place, so it should be. Something else we could do is a needle decompression, where we can take a needle not day long, stick it right into your chest. And just like a balloon, just blow it, just take the air out. All these things can happen if you don't have a seatbelt on, if you're driving crazy and you get in the crash. Not fun stuff. Okay, we're going to put some defibrillation pads on the patient. Uh, Jake, are we, we're having a rhythm change patients in V fib. Blood pressure is going down, no pulses. Okay, let's start CPR, guys. Let's start CPR. Okay, may have to lower it down a little bit. There we go. She's starting CPR. Got a bag going for the respirations, and we're going to rock and roll here. Do we have that second IV line in? The IO Got the IO in, good. Let's call the lab for a couple units of blood as well. We have already done that. Whenever you're ready, Jake, defibrillate for me. You ready? Okay. Clear? Shock delivered. Shock delivered. CPR restarted. Okay. We're going to give it two minutes. Just like on TV, this is where we're defibrillating. If you notice, we've got pads in place instead of the old paddles like you see on TV where they go like this. That's dangerous. Your life will get shocked yourself. So after two minutes of CPR, Jake will say it's been two minutes. He's going to check the monitor again, still determine the patient's in the trickier fibrillation. He's going to give a second shot. Are you going to wait for the whole minute? 15 seconds. Okay. If you're holding on to that patient when the shock's delivered, it's going to shock you as well. Not a good thing. Although it can be funny if you don't like the person. So after two shocks, we're going to do CPR for two minutes. And then what are we going to do? We're going to give some medication. Once you give it one amp of epi, one milligram of epinephrine. One amp of epi. Go ahead and give it. Epinephrine is the same thing as adrenaline, just like when you get scared or something. It's the same medication as if it was in your body. So the idea is hopefully it will get the heart rate going again. Now Jake's telling me that the patient, uh, Epi's in, good. Now Jake's telling me that the patient is in asystole. Anybody know what that means? Heart has stopped, that's exactly right. So what do we do for that? Whoever said it, what do we do? Go ahead. You don't know, what would you do if somebody's heart stopped? Keep doing CPR, you're absolutely correct. So we're going to keep doing CPR. There are other meds we could possibly think of, but the main one is epinephrine. So all we can do is give epinephrine every three to five minutes. We'll do this for up to about 30 minutes, depending on the situation. If it's a child or um, a drowning victim, we may go a lot longer. If it's somebody that's bled out, we may go shorter. That's a physician's choice. So we're doing CPR. We change every two minutes because anybody's ever done this. I know a couple of you in this room have done CPR. Uh, it gets very tired and very fast. So what we're going to do is change out. We're going to continue bagging the patient. And after about 20 minutes, all we can really do is say, I'm sorry, time of death is, and call it. And that happens. We can't save everybody. Trauma is very hard to save if they go into a cardiac arrest situation. At this point, all we could really do would be call the coroner, and just like they did outside, come collect the body. Hopefully, we can get a hold of the family and do some condolences there. We're on the record now on cause number 25 d one 210 Caption State of Indiana versus Will Van Heinegen. Hearing in court is Mr. Heinegen in person. We're here today for sentencing. 
Mr. Heineken, you've been found guilty after a trial by jury of the following offenses. Count one, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, causing death, a level four felony. Count two, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, causing death, level four felony. Count three, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, causing serious bodily injury, a level five felony. Count four, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, causing serious bodily injury, level five felony. Count five, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, causing serious bodily injury, a level five felony. Prior to pronouncing the sentence upon you, I'll ask at this time if there are any victims that would like to make a statement to the court. You do not have to identify yourselves, but you can if you wish. If there's anybody that's wishing to make a statement now, please step forward. Thank you for giving me the floor. It's weird to think that a couple weeks ago, things were different. Life was different. Even I was different, especially since some people were still alive, those who are no longer with us. Of course, many of you know that my father recently passed away and that it was devastating to me. Somehow, this has surpassed that. I honestly thought you would have been better than this. I would have thought your accomplishments would steer you in the right direction. You had a future. You had potential. I saw it. Everyone saw it. And now that's all gone. She's gone. You killed her. Look at me when I'm talking to you. I may not be the judge, but I demand your respect. You will listen to what I have to say. I am talking. I don't even need this piece of paper. How could you? Think of all the people that you permanently scarred. Think about the families you've torn apart. You killed your own girlfriend. Do you hear me? Isn't it crazy to think that's true? I wish you would have died in that crash you said. On the night of the collision, I was a member of the group that was struck by the vehicle driven by Will. I can still vividly recall the sound of the screeching tires and the sickening impact of metal against metal. In the aftermath of the, the collision, it became clear that the cause of the crash was Will's decision to drink and drive. He made a reckless choice that had a devastating consequences for everyone involved. So my dear friend Gabe lost his life and played us to be a result of his actions. I cannot, I cannot begin to describe the pain and heartache that Gabe's family has endured as a result of this tragedy. They have lost their daughter, a sister and a friend, and their lives will never be the same again. As Gabe's best friend and a witness to all of this that happened that night, I can say without hesitation that Will is responsible for Kayla's death, and I hope you have a terrible time in prison. I don't think I will be ever, I don't think I'll ever be able to fathom the reality that what was supposed to be a fun night turned into tragedy. Kayla and Kayla had their whole lives ahead of them, one look at either of them, and you could tell that they had a future. 
Everyone looked up to them. Everyone looked up to Will. He seemed like such a genuine guy. And of all the questions I have in this world related to this, all I can ask is why? Why did this happen? What made it come down to this? What made you? I'm sorry. What made you grab that drink and get in that car? You ignored your conscience. You not only hurt yourself, you not only hurt Caleb and Kayla and anyone in that other car, you hurt their families. You hurt your family. You hurt all of us. You hurt yourself. And I hope that those images from that night are etched into your mind. And I hope that when you go to sleep, you think of them. I hope those images haunt you. I can't look at you. When Caleb asked me to prom, I thought it would be the best day of my high school career. My longtime boyfriend invited me to go to a dance that everyone told us would be so special. Our teachers reminded us to be smart, and they reminded us to be safe. And you failed to do either. You chose to drink and get behind the wheel and not inform anyone that was in the car with you. We didn't know. We didn't get to make the smart and safe choice. You made the choice for us, and because of it, my boyfriend is dead. He's dead. He deserved to go off to college and find what made him happy in life. But instead, he's in a box six feet under. I want all of you to hear me very clearly when I say this. Drinking and driving will get you in a box six feet under. It will get your friends into a box six feet under. Because even though we are all still alive, there are parts of each of us that are gone now. We will never get them back, and we will never get those two people back. Will, you deserve every bad thing coming your way. I hope the nightmares that haunt my dreams haunt yours as well. You deserve to rot in prison for what you've done. You were my friend, a good friend, and now, looking at you makes me sick. I hope these words will stick with you for the rest of your miserable, miserable life. Is there any other victims that would like to make a statement to the court? Mr. Heineken, do you wish I'd make a statement to the court before sentencing? There is nothing you can do to me, nothing that I haven't already done to myself. This was my mistake, this was my fault, and every 
everyone here, everyone paid for it. Is that fair? Is that justice? No. There's nothing I can do to make this right. There's nothing you can do to make this right. Nothing can. Nothing can. Mr. Heinegger, please rise for sensing. The one thing that you said that certainly is the truth is that there's nothing that can make this right. I have the responsibility of sentencing you. And a lot of folks think that the judge can do whatever he wants in regards to sentencing, and that is not the case. There are sentencing laws to follow, and there's no sense that I'm going to be able to give. It's going to make the victims feel like justice has been served. It may seem harsh to you, the sentence that's going to be handed down, but as you said, there's nothing that can make this right. Mr. Heinegan, you're charged in five counts. Two of those are level four felonies. Three of those are level five felonies. On those level four felonies, the sentencing range are two to 12 years with an advisory sentence of six years. The level five felonies, the sentencing range is one to six years with an advisory sentence of three years. What that means, Mr. Heinegan, is that those advisory sentences, or the law tells the court where to start if it's thinking as to an appropriate sentence. And the court takes into consideration all factors, including aggravating factors to increase that sentence to the maximum, or mitigating factors to take that sentence to the minimum. And when I look at your case, I find as aggravating circumstances is that the crimes you committed are defined by statute as crimes of violence, specifically operating a vehicle intoxicated causing death and operating a vehicle while intoxicated causing serious bodily injury. Also, I find as an aggravating circumstance the multiple victims involved in your crimes. Two young adults have died, and three adults that have serious bodily injuries as a result of your actions. However, I do also find that there are mitigating circumstances. You have no history of any delinquency or criminal activity. And because of your age, the court finds that you're likely to respond affirmatively to probation or a short term of a case. Well, these factors might assist your spouse. Counts one and two, operating while intoxicated, causing death, or full felony, essentially each count, to six years. Three of those years in each count will be executed at the Indian Department of Corrections, followed by one year in each of those counts, and three corrections, home detention, electronic monitoring, followed by two years in each count, probation. A level four felony, you have to execute 75% of your time. On counts three, four, or five, operating while intoxicated, causing serious bodily injury, the court sentences you in each count to three years. One year in each count will be served at the Indian Department of Corrections, followed by in each count one year, community corrections, home detention, electronic monitoring, followed by in each count one year probation. These counts are to be served consecutively. That means they'll be done one after the other. They're not going together. In addition, you'll have a 12-year license suspension, and that's to begin at the start of your probation, so not while you're incarcerated. And so that you know, in summary, what this means for you is that you'll be served nine years in the Department of Corrections, followed by five years community corrections, home detention, electronic monitoring, followed by seven years of probation. 
Do I have restrict terms of probation? They will include withdrawal drug and alcohol terms. They will drink a substance abuse evaluation. They will follow through the recommended treatment. They will be prohibited from consuming any alcohol on empty liquor stores or on empty bars. They will be prohibited from using any illegal drugs controlled substances, including hemp products. They will be subject to random drug screens. And a positive test will be due to violation of your probation. If the court finds that you did violate the terms of your probation, in those seven years that you're on probation, the court can order that to be revoked. And that you serve those remaining seven years back in the United Department of Corrections. You have plenty of time to think about your actions. Over here for today. Good luck.